Ask me what I'm doing, Jeff. What are you doing, Jeff? No. <laughs> this is a wise ass. Just ask me what I'm doing. What are you doing over there? I'm reading a book. <laughs> What's the book? <laughs> it's a biography of Barbara Streisand. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> She's one of your favorites, isn't she? Yeah, I love Barbara Streisand. Yeah, what's your favorite Barbara Streisand thing? Oh, when she did uh, Yentl, that was a good film. <laughs> I've never seen Yentl, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's a great motion picture. Is it really? Yeah. I liked her in What's Up Doc. You ever seen What's yeah, Up Doc? Yeah, good film. Yeah, that's a good film, where she plays the rabbit. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Who was Elmer Fudd in that one? Can you do Elmer Fudd? <laughs> sure. And can you do his voice? <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you do can you do Bugs Bunny? Uh, sure, I can try. Yeah. All right. Well, if you do Bugs Bunny, I'll do Elmer Fudd because I think I can get close with Elmer Fudd. All right. All right, All right then. Okay, you ready? Yeah, right, yeah. Let's start the show. Yeah. All right. All right. Be very, very quiet. <laughs> I'm hunting rabbits. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Doc? <laughs> Wait, wait, it wasn't that good. <laughs> you know, sometimes I think the audience doesn't help by being too encouraging. Yeah, they're very encouraging. <laughs> All right, what about we'll do Elmer Fudd, uh, but Elmer Fudd played by Michael Caine. All right. And we'll have Bugs Bunny played by, who would you like Bugs Bunny to be? Uh, let's see, I would do uh, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson, sure. All right, so it's uh, Elmer Fudd is Michael Caine. Right. And uh, Bugs Bunny is Liam Neeson. Right. All right. All right, then. And we begin. Oi. <laughs> Be very, very quiet. <laughs> I'm hunting rabbits. What's up, Doc? <laughs> I don't know who you are, but I will find you. <laughs> you what? Bugs Bunny. What? I said, my name is Bugs Bunny. Why? Can I ask you why you're talking so quietly, Liam Neeson? Uh, Liam Neeson? Because there's no time. <laughs> I want you to jump in this cartoon black hole. Quickly, quickly, jump in it, quickly, there's no time! Wait, wait, no, 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 no you see? No. In the, in the attempt of being encouraging and helpful and nice, you've, you know, overpraised us one more time. I was kind of proud of that. I thought... Nah, we it wasn't that good. <laughs> so we should leave it in, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's leave it in. We'll be right back. Sponsored by University of Phoenix. Let's get to work. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. It's a great day uh, for New Zealand. They've managed to stop some contraband getting into the country. There was a man, this is a story that's really happening now. A man was traveling to New Zealand and was stopped trying to enter the country with an 11 inch donkey penis. <laughs> you know, it was, it was in his luggage, it wasn't attached to the man. <laughs> like people, did, <laughs> like the security guards didn't go, wait a minute, pants off mister. Oh! 
Like the guy had big ears and he was like, he was like. <laughs> Passport please, Mike. <laughs> no, he, he had apparently a donkey penis in his luggage. That's not an, a euphemism for anything. That's, I'm not saying anything else. That's what I, I'm actually saying the thing that actually happened. He had a donkey penis in his luggage and officials confiscated it and the man was very upset. And I'm thinking, not as upset as the, the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> big celebrity birthday today. All Hollywood is talking about it. It's the big one today, isn't oh, it? It's huge. Yeah, everyone's very excited. Happy birthday, 15th century astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I swear to God, I actually saw a woman in the audience go, Who, who is that? <laughs> It's, what is that, uh, Nicholas Copernicus? Uh, who is that? Is he one of the Kardashians? Who is it? <laughs> Nicholas Copernicus, madam. He was born on this day in 1473. I remember that because of the rhyme my teachers taught me at school. In 1473, Nicholas Copernicus was born. <laughs> You will be a failure, Ferguson! <laughs> and they were right. <laughs> Nicholas Copernicus is a Copernicus. Is a kiss. You sound like Paul Abdul. Thank you. <laughs> Nicholas Copernicus is considered the father of astronomy. I know what you're thinking, Craig, you can't do a monologue about Nicholas Copernicus. That was Jay Leno's signature bit. <laughs> That's true, but Leno is gone now. That's why he was fired, I'm thinking, because of all the stuff he did about Copernicus. <laughs> hey, hey, Copernicus, hey, 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 Copernicus. Copernicus studied the heavenly bodies, right? That's cold, Jay. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think it's a long time since Kevin was on Yeah, the well, you said Kevin. I heard you say Kevin. I didn't say Kevin. Uh, yeah, you said it. No, I didn't. I speak Jay Lenoise. Do you? Sure. All right, you say to me, uh, it's, it's happy birthday, Nicholas Copernicus, as Jay Leno. All right. It's happy birthday, Nicholas Copernicus. Very good. Yeah, see? There you go. All right. Um, yeah, no, it, uh, anyway, look, astronomers spend a lot of time looking through telescopes. Then they tend to neglect things that are important in life, like their hair. But not Copernicus. A, because he predates the telescope by 100 years, and B, he had lovely hair. Do we have a picture of Copernicus? Look there, look at that! Mm. Yep. Now, Valentine's Day may be over, but I'd like to give him a great big Copernicus. There you are! Yeah. Yeah. There it is! Yeah. Copernicus is mostly thought of as an astronomer. You know, the stars, the planets and such. For our viewers in Los Angeles, the stars and the planets are the things behind the poisonous cloud of smog. <laughs> But Copernicus wasn't just an astronomer, he also practiced medicine. You know, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but he didn't have a license, that. He practiced medicine without a medical degree. He was like a 15th century Dr. Phil. He was that guy. <laughs> oh, hey, wait a minute. I'm the one that's not a real <laughs> doctor. Me! <laughs> well, I can't say that, but it's true. <laughs> Anyway, you know what's amazing about Copernicus? He made his discoveries a hundred years before the telescope was invented. That's how future civilizations will look at people in the 1980s. They'll be like, they looked at porn before the invention of the internet. <laughs> Copernicus changed the way we see ourselves and the universe. A hundred years after he died, people were actually getting into trouble for teaching his theories. That's what happened to Galileo. 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 <laughs> Galileo. 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 <laughs> Galileo. <laughs> then you say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say Galileo, and then no. we both say. No, we Ga say it together. Yeah. All right. All right. Galileo. Magnifico. No, man. <laughs> We both do Galileo, Figaro, and then right, Magnifico. Right. right, okay. Galileo, Galileo, Figaro. Ga no, wait! I'm starting You're again! To say it when I say it. Right, okay. Galileo. Galileo. Figaro. Magnifico! <laughs> Pretty good show tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Strong. Yeah, Strong. gonna be a good one.
back, everybody. Welcome back. Come on in and sit a spell, why don't you? Come on, show me your genitals. Well, you went right for it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Please. I, 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 I just me. said... <laughs> I was doing a callback to a show that I had done earlier. That was a good one. I remember that one. Yeah. Very funny. Yeah, that was a good show. When did we do that good show? It was about 2008. Yeah, that was a yeah, long time ago. Yeah. What uh, time is it, Jeffrey Pierce? It's tweet mail time. Like a heliocentric model of the universe, we remain stationary while comedy gold revolves around us. <laughs> Uh, Copernicus. Yeah, no, I get it, man. <laughs> yeah. This is very high concept. That's yeah, no, all. Yeah, I thought I'd, you know, mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, clearly. Do you want to do our own jingle for the emails? I'd love to. All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a bit like craft work, actually. Really good. Doesn't it? It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love craft work because they're German. One ding. They are German. Two dings. They are still German. Three dings. We are Dracula, although we've changed it. We've changed the Dracula. Changed and now we are Upper West Side uh, person who works in a fashion store who talks a bit like Dracula, but also is from South America and doesn't like what you're wearing. <laughs> These so, shoes are terrible on you, and why are you talking like Elmer Fudd? <laughs> Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> the hell's going on? I don't know, man. I like it. I like no, it. I don't like it. Four dings. Italian Bill Clinton. What's the coming to go? <laughs> and I'm not doing five dings, because that's room service. I don't want to talk to that guy. We got some bad blood with Jerry. No, I don't want to. I just don't, I don't want him to call me. I don't want it. It. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let the machine get it. Hello, this is Craig. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Beep. Uh, hi, Craig. It's uh, Jerry. I guess you're not in right now, although I can see you on the TV. Uh, this must be a rerun, but really, who can tell? Anyway, listen. Um, <laughs> Why don't you kiss my ass, and I'll meet you after the show, all right? Uh, Click. <laughs> wow. When Jerry hung up the phone, it sounded like the click sounded like someone saying click. You probably thought that was a click. Oh, that was oh, just what me. What the hell? So, Jerry, you don't really exist. You're in my mind? I'm in your mind. I've always been in your mind. <laughs> there is no Jerry from room service. <laughs> this whole show has been fabricated to help you through some weird therapy. <laughs> You're in a padded room now <laughs> with friends. <laughs> I'll sit with this, man. I'll sit with it as long as you like. I'm still going, sir. No, no, no. no. <laughs> All right, here's the tweets and the emails. This is from Lena in Saratoga, New York. You ever been there? Saratoga, good place, good people. Yeah, that's the, that's the town where they have that thing. What is it called again? Uh, the Togas. Togas? <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, do you think married couples can still have sex every single day into the 60s and 70s? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Now, of course they can. You, you can have old person sex. It's the best sex to have. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, loving expression between a couple, they're having... Oh, ah! No, it's fine. What do you think, Jeff? Fine, yeah. Most yeah. of our demographics probably having sex right now. You know, I think about that sometimes. I think about some people have probably got this TV on and they're having sex. And sometimes there's other people in the room with them, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sometimes people are doing this show and having sex. This is from uh, David and Quincy in Massachusetts. I don't know if you can tell, but David is a... What is that, Jeff? That's a cockatoo. Cockatoo, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was a parrot or a cockatoo, but I know that you've been around a cockatoo, so you... Yes, know. I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. So, yeah. this is a... Uh, I don't know what the, is going on don't with know. you guys. Don't know. Anyway, David says, uh, Craig, do Alfredo and the Shy Guys have some nice bouncy music to put us all in a good mood? You got some nice bouncy music, sure, Alfredo? Yeah, here we go. One, two, three, hey! <laughs> Bounce! 
fancy music. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, of course, there's Alfredo Sauce and the Shy Guys. They're too shy to come out from behind the curtain. <laughs> Just give us a wave or something, Alfredo. Yeah, sure. Just a wave. Hey, everybody. There you hey. Go. Hey. Hey. There you All go. right. There you go. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, put it away. This is, <laughs> this, is like, this is like a kid's show if kids were on drugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is uh, from Kathy in Dover in Delaware. You ever been there? Yeah, you ever been to I, Dover? Uh, oh, I've been to Dover, yeah. Have you, have you been to Dover? Oh, many times. <laughs> what the hell? What is wrong with you? You judgmental Tootsie Fruitsie. <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are? You come in here with your, oh, we don't like that, but we do like that. You got a problem with Dover? What the yeah, hell is wrong well, with you? Just, just because someone's been to Dover a couple of times, that's a problem for you guys? What's wrong with those yeah. people? I've been to Cincinnati. You got a problem with yeah, that, too? Yeah, what's wrong? I've been to Cincinnati. I've been to Dover. I've been to Dover and then went to Cincinnati. Yeah, that's Never. right. I've been to Dover in Cincinnati. Kiss my ass. All right, now, wait a minute. That's right, because that's the name of that restaurant in Cincinnati. The Dover. Dover. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where you get the Dover Soul. Very good. So we've been to Dover been in to Dover. Cincinnati. That's right. Your move, censor. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, Matthew in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, he says, uh, Craig, what's uh, Jeff like to hang out with on the weekend? Ah, I have no idea. Yeah, you, you don't stop by and uh, visit. You should. You should. Where do you live? I stand right here the whole weekend. <laughs> All right, Michelle in Toluca Lake says, uh, Craig, what time is the appropriate bedtime for a 13-year-old who loves your show? Oh, man. <laughs> even say on the TV inappropriate for kids under the age of like 40 or something <laughs> what is the appropriate age cutoff thing on the TV do you know or do you just sit there in judgment of me do you actually know you don't know I think it's TV 14 TV 14 TV 14 sure. yeah so the appropriate age uh, time for bed would be before the show starts <laughs> this is from Christine in San Dimas California you ever been there oh love it they got a nice water park there Really? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They All right. Do. Yeah. Dear Craig and Jeff and Secretariat, how many times a day do you floss? Well, I'm European, so I don't understand the question, Jeff. I'm I'm uh, I'm dead, so no need for that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you, you don't floss either. All right. I look forward to your angry letters, dental hygienists. <laughs> And this is from Scott in Oxford, Mississippi, who says, Dear Craig and Jeff, would you ever go up in a private spaceship if you had the opportunity? Nah, I've taken acid. It's the same thing. <laughs> I, feel I've, I feel I've kind of been there. Yeah, no, what? I've already done it. I've already done it. You've been in a spaceship? I own one. You, <laughs> you own a spaceship? Yeah, man, I got a private spaceship. Come up sometime. I thought you stayed there the whole time. Well, now and again, someone comes in and unplugs me, and I go for a little trip. <laughs> okay, Jeff. <laughs> I feel I know the answer to this, but where in space have you been in your private spaceship? Well, it's a planet that's newly discovered called Dover. Oh, that's not the answer I was expecting. Yeah, it's, the, it's one of the third moons of uh, Titan. Tight, tight. <laughs> yeah, I, I was convinced you were going to say Uranus. Well, see, that's the kind of smut that I would expect from you. <laughs> so... <laughs> Is there a restaurant on Uranus? Yeah, it's called the Dover. The Dover, yeah. So, have you ever... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. He's, like, he's like having a seizure or oh, something no. over there. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll take a break. We'll be right yeah. back, everybody. We'll be right back. Tonight's an Oscar-winning movie star. His latest film, Three Days to Kill, is in theaters on Friday. Take a look at this. <laughs> oh, yes, it's Kevin Costner, everybody! Hey! 
What's up, big time? You're looking good. Looking Thank relaxed. You. Looking like. Can may I touch your? Uh... Wow. Perfect. Is that perfect? What a good start to this whole thing. I mean, we're already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can keep going. <laughs> Now what we do in my country is now you touch my leg. That's all. Uh, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, what we do in my country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good around the corner. How are you doing? This uh, this is a this is a, a, a return to the action violence uh, gun movie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. I've i you know I've kind of made my living making all kinds of movies, and I I like that. I mean I, I think one of the nicest things for me is when people do come up and say a movie that they like, it, I never know what's going to come out of their mouth. And I'm kind of glad that my uh, career didn't drill down to a certain movie. No, I mean, you've made, like, some of the most, like, significant... And I think my own, like, love of movies, like Untouchables, Field of Dreams, I mean, uh, like, Dances with Wolves. These are, like, huge movies. To have one of those in a career, it would be spectacular. To even work with Sean Connery once, for yeah. God's sakes. I, you know, I'll, I'll say this. I've... People ask you about, you know, the the best actor you've ever worked with, the blah blah blah, and and uh, and I and I say this, and it eliminates actors in a way which you never really want to do. And I've always said that I thought Gene Hackman was the uh, the, the 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 strongest actor I've ever worked with, but I, I felt that um, Sean Connery was the biggest star that I ever worked with, and that doesn't diminish how great an actor he was. Right. But he, he when he walked around, there was no bigger star. Than Sean Connery. You know, when I when I I did a, a thing, they were having a, a thing for him in Hollywood, like a kind of a night where yeah. you, know, you pay a tribute to him, and that's the night I met him. And I was with my fiance at the time, who's now my wife. And he, Sean must have been about 73, 74 yeah. at the time. And he came over and and he kind of he said, "He's Sean Connery." So he said, "I introduced him to my wife Megan," and he went, "Hello, Megan. Nice to meet you." Oh. And she blushed from yeah. her breasts all the way up. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Exactly. She was like, it's Sean Connery. The biggest star. Biggest star in the world. Women go crazy for this guy. And he was such a fair, he's such a fair man. I, I remember at one point that he thought something was, was, you know, when he lived out of the country, if, if he does too much work, he loses a lot of money in taxes. And Sean watched his money very, very carefully. But when he took that job, he was really careful with the producer saying, okay, look, I, I have to be out at a certain time. He was very careful about that. And they got lazy about it. And it, it really put him in a spot. And I remember I caught him in the bar one night, and he said, Mr. Nash, come over here. I see. I knew yeah. you would do it. Well, he does. He, and he did. But you come, just like, you know, mm -hmm. he says something like that. You're going to trot over there. And he had a list of things. That he wanted me to look at that list and say, do you remember this happening? Do you remember this happening? Do you remember this happening? And what it said to me was he was going to tear somebody's head off. But he wanted to be really sure that he was fair and then he was going to go t tear this person's head off and i i just i just thought of, he's a very fair man yeah and, and a brutal frightening man as well obviously oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. come here Mr. <laughs> yeah. i just want to check that did you ever did you ever play golf with him uh i did once uh, and and uh i don't know just just being with him uh i mean he loved the game for a long time i got introduced to it through 10 cup really uh before that i might have maybe played once a year with the father-in-law and you know you know but see, he he loved it so much and just being with that guy was um it's crazy i've had a lot of good things happen to me he was one of the really one of yeah, the really no, best he uh he was like you know everybody in scotland he's like an icon in scotland yeah. like a, yeah and and i never played golf at all until i was 50 years old right i'm 51 and i, I my rebellion as, as a kid was to not play golf right. everyone's like doing sean connery and playing golf <laughs> and and so i started doing it and i'm like i've wasted half my life yeah. not playing golf yeah are you into it now i think you can waste half your life playing golf. playing golf yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just takes yeah. It just takes so long. Sure. You play, you go out, the sun goes away, and your life's ruined. Yeah. See, the thing that you do is, like, you're not just acting, but you, you, you direct the movies, right? When you go back to acting and not directing movies, is it you get, do you lose your temper? Are you very short-tempered with directors and stuff? No, I, I, I say that when you direct, it seems like the questions never end, and they, just, they never stop. And I'm really grateful to be directed. You know, I, I don't want to be put in the corner where I go, this doesn't exactly feel right. I'll let them know that it doesn't feel right. But I, I, I like I like acting for directors. I played a lot of sports. I always like playing for a coach. Right. I like the idea of, of getting it right.
What about like in Dances with Wolves when you see your bare ass, you're like, I'm gonna put my bare ass in the scene, no? Yeah. Or like, maybe we could use that ass guy yeah. to use the bare ass. I, mean, I didn't have enough money to get some, to pay somebody to do it, so, you know. Um, it you, was, you got money now. Yeah, I got money now. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, you read that in the script and you think, hmm. But I swear, I swear when anything that's odd, like nudity or love, there's, that uh, comes with the business, but anytime something like that is written perfectly into a movie right the embarrassment of it goes away because it's so when people start to just take their shirt off to take it off when people just oh, it's having a oh i've been scene. a few nights like that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what about like when you're the director of the movie <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah you're not talking are you no no not about I'm that <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, the, uh, <laughs> but when you're directing a movie, you're in charge of it. Like, that's your ship. You're captain yeah. of the ship. So you're walking about with your junk hanging out, saying, all right, you guys, everybody over there, shoot my ass properly and light it better. Well, I, it's, it's true. And I had to actually tell my, my parents, because my, my parents um, followed me like, they saw all my Little League games and everything, and when I went out to direct a the movie, they bought a trailer and took it out to South Dakota. And they go, we won't be in your way, we'll just be on a hill over here, and we'll watch you. I and mean, it was like, I'm a grown man. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I would... Um, I would look up on the hill in the morning, and they had two lawn chairs and, and, a, and a motor home, and I'd go to work with all the guys, and I'd, have, I'd see my mom wave at me, and I'd go... <laughs> to my mom, and they... It was, you know, on some end, you can be embarrassed by that, and on another way, you can go, man, I had parents that, you know, that's really... That's fantastic, yeah, was, I think. it was. And that's, that's really good. Yeah, Mom, you got to get over the other hill. You're in the shot. <laughs> I, I, did a, I was doing a movie once, and my parents came to visit, and they saw the set up, and they said, this is really wonderful, son. Someone should take a photograph. <laughs> and I'm like, this is all so that we yeah. can get a photograph. It's yeah. the whole thing is about putting it on the camera. You can do a lot of things. I've never told this story. In, in Dancers with Wolves, when I'm actually riding, kind of give up my, my life, and I kind of do that Catholic thing. And, uh, and then the, the soldier who's about to shoot me gets sh shot in the forehead. I, he does that, and I cut back, and it was my father with the gun. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I said, you want to be in the movie? You want to save me? And he said, yeah, and... Um, That's it, a fantastic story. Yeah, there's a little things that you can throw, uh, throw people into. You know, in fact, though, I'm not even going to say that. So it, it, does, it goes nowhere. Wait, 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 wait. No, it, let, let, let me stop. Have you ever seen this show before? <laughs> Did you see the monologue? <laughs> this is where we go. No, yeah. you're in the road to yeah. nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with Kevin Costner. <laughs> movie star for a long time now, right? Agreed? Yeah. Are you in, a, <laughs> are you in therapy at all? Uh, no. no, I'm not. Well, now is perhaps the time. <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, then. So, Kevin, I see you're wearing uh, a hide trouser. Uh, what are you trying to hide in your trousers? <laughs> <laughs> would you have, would you ever would you ever get therapy? Or are you yeah, are you kind of that? See, just a second. Um, nothing. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you ever get that? Would you ever uh, investigate your own mind? Is it something that you think you you would benefit from? Have you ever done it? No, I try. I tried to teach myself uh, uh, how to go under hypnosis, just because um, I thought you know sometimes when you're acting everything is is there's just so much going on and whenever you do anything the best is when you're the most relaxed and i thought maybe if i could just take myself under and get rid of all the distractions it it never worked but i've you know i've kind of searched around how to do this do this job you know oh, you're not bad at it thanks yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey i think you you may work out the movie uh Movie is Three Days to Kill. Kevin Costner, it uh, opens on Friday. It opens on Friday. Kevin Costner, everybody. Kevin Costner. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, and it's a beautiful and 
talented performer. She's here performing down into muddy water off of her debut album, Whiskey and Lace. It's in stores now. Please welcome the gorgeous Crystal Keith, everybody. <laughs> guest is a very funny comedian. Thank goodness! <laughs> you can find his album, I'm telling you, for the first time, free on his website. Please welcome Tony Dio, everybody. Tony Dio. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. I am very excited to be here. I have been traveling a lot. I was in a hotel a few weeks ago. They had one of those memory foam mattresses. You sink into it and it remembers your shape. <laughs> very comfortable mattress. I do not recommend it if you already have self-esteem issues about your body. <laughs> a 
Because the last thing you want to see first thing in the morning. <laughs> is that giant crater you left in the memory foam. <laughs> it's not any better on skinny people. I wake up, looks like a Halloween decoration was laying there. <laughs> oh my God, I can see my rib cage. That's not healthy. <laughs> we don't need memory foam. Not in America. We need forgetful foam. <laughs> I uh, got my scuba diving license recently. That was fun. We were in class. The teacher was telling us that if you're ever out diving and it gets cold, you can just pee on yourself. <laughs> and it'll warm you up. I thought that was kind of disgusting. But then we were out one day. <laughs> started getting chilly. And I did it. The good news, it worked. The bad news, I was golfing. <laughs> I had to buy some staples the other day. I didn't realize that the minimum number of staples you can purchase, 5,000. <laughs> yeah. Now I use like one staple a month. I did the math. Even if I live to be 100, there's going to be 4,000 staples left in that box <laughs> when I die. I'm not leaving my kids in the will. I, uh, I was in the pharmacy area of the grocery store, ran across their little family planning aisle. And I realize they can't just put up a big sign that says condom aisle. But I don't think family planning's really the appropriate name either. <laughs> Every time I've been shopping in that aisle, I've been pretty much planning on not having a family. <laughs> I think that aisle should be called family prevention. <laughs> and family planning could be the beer aisle. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if it's just a fad with all my friends. They start naming their kids these crazy, wacky names. Uh, one couple I know named their first daughter Lyric, which is pretty, but it's not a name. It's a noun. <laughs> then they named their next daughter True. That's an adjective. <laughs> Maybe I should be the first guy to name my kid a past participle. <laughs> Here's my little boy, If. And my other son, why? <laughs> I've been married for several years. When you've been married a while, uh, your love life has a tendency to diminish somewhat. I didn't even realize it till I found myself checking the expiration date on a box of condoms. Because <laughs> you know, when you're young, you look at the expiration date, you weren't even sure you'd live that long. <laughs> Now I get a box of 12, it's like October 2015. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. I'm gonna do what I can. Hell, I'll probably get through that box of staples first. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much.